Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. Let's go ahead and wrap up the month of June and let's start off with the things that I have not wrapped up from the month of June just yet. And first up is Memories of Ice by Stephen Erickson. This is book three of Malazan Book of the Fallen. So far having a really good time with this book. The only thing that I'm struggling with and struggling probably isn't even the right word. It's just there's a lot to digest when you're reading this book and I mean that in in the same page count that I have read for this book I have gotten the same amount of information that like whole trilogies goes through, right? I hope that makes sense. I just mean that like, if I read 100 pages, the amount of information that I feel like is stuffed into those 100 pages is like the equivalent to a whole 450 page book from a lot of other authors. So that has the enjoyment factor and I feel like I'm getting so much information, really starting to enjoy this world, really starting to get attached to characters, which is nice because for the longest time I kind of felt a little detached from a lot of characters. But it also means that it's a lot. And so even when I, I make a little bit of progress, I feel like I should have made more because so much is happening. And so that is an experience, uh, an interesting thing to experience and an interesting thing to juggle because I've never read anything that I feel that same way about. Uh, and like I said, enjoying this one, definitely enjoying this one much more than Dead House Gates. Dead House Gates was much more of a struggle for me, but so far Memories of, of Ice has been a pretty pleasant experience. I am hoping that the, the back part of this book maybe picks up just a little bit. I need a little bit of payoff because so much feels like it's uh, setting the table and uh, you know setting things up. I, I think the series is getting pointed in a direction finally that I at least have realized and can see you know maybe some of the paths that we're going to take as the series goes down or at least the, the main one overarching thing uh, that may happen. Maybe that, um, that you know maybe that's completely wrong. I don't know but I do hope that this book itself kind of does something towards the end that kind of makes it feel more self-contained and not just like the first part of a chain of books. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with that, but without knowing that while I'm reading it, if I should experience it as like individual chunks or think of it all as uh, one continuous story, it's making me not sure how, uh, you know, this book is gonna get wrapped up and how I'll feel about it in the end. And the other book that I have not finished yet is The Master of White Storm by Janie Wirtz. I had plans to finish that this week and at work we had a couple production, in, or the same production incidents that are incident that has been going on for this whole week now and uh, has really just kind of not maybe wanna do anything else once I'm done working except go to the gym and then be done for the day. So I did not get as much reading time in as I would have liked, but uh, the 10% or so I'm into this book seems fun. I heard that this is more of a sword and sorcery kind of uh, fantasy work from her and not uh, the same epic scale that her Wars of Light and Shadow series is. So looking forward to getting a little bit more into that. But with those two out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about what I did finish and what I did read. And uh, the first one up that I did complete this month is The Employees, a workspace novel of the 22nd century uh, by Olga Robin. Uh, I ended up giving this one a three-star rating, I, but I do think this is a very interesting book. This is one that a, I saw somebody in the comments recommend. And uh, if hack for me. If you want me to read a suggestion that you have, if the audiobook is under like five hours, the odds that I read your suggestion skyrocket, like absolutely skyrocket to the moon. The odds that I will read it are really, really high. But this was one that somebody recommended. I asked for something kind of, uh, you know, short but interesting. And I will say this is a very interesting book. And it's one of those books where I read it and I knew while I was reading it, I wasn't really understanding the commentary that is going on. This is a very uh, interesting book. Basically, you, we're looking at uh, a spaceship. Uh, it seems like HR has come into a spaceship that is kind of talking or to a spaceship and is talking to the crew about uh, their feelings and, and things like that. Now, and the crew is made up of humans and kind of these like android creatures. And one of the things that when I looked it up because I felt like I was missing some of the context of what was being explored here is the idea of transhumanism. And that's something I had to look up because that was a phrase I uh, was not familiar with. So I'm going to go ahead and, and read that definition really quick. Transhumanism is a philosophical and intellectual movement that advocates that enhancement of the human condition by developing and making widely available sophisticated technologies that can greatly enhance longevity, cognition, and well-being. So basically that as technology progresses, we should be using technology to push what humans can do forward and basically make their lives better. Uh, this book kind of explores that idea. There are some other ideas about like 
man-made versus like being born. There's a lot of interesting things that I, I definitely did not capture everything going on in this book, but I did find it interesting. This is maybe one that if I went back and reread, knowing some of the context I looked up afterwards that I maybe would enjoy it a little bit more. Uh, if that sounds interesting to you, uh, I would recommend reading it. It's really short. I think I think the audiobook was like two and a half hours or something. So it's like not a huge time commitment. It's an interesting idea. And I think there's some interesting theme uh, themes explored in, in that book. So uh, while it wasn't like a home run hit for me, I did like it. I, I It was kind of thought provoking. So it, it was interesting. Next up, I returned to one of my favorite authors, maybe my favorite author, Session Lou. And this is one of his, probably his most out there book that I have read. And that is The Cretaceous Past. And the basic premise of this book is the idea that uh, living life forms have been on earth for as long as they have the idea that humanity is the first like actually far intelligent being to live is unlikely and so he takes that premise and kind of plays with it in a funny way but basically he has in the Cretaceous period that ants and dinosaurs are actually these super intelligent beings that uh, form a symbiotic relationship with each other and that starts out with a dinosaur laying down and getting ants to eat uh, food that is stuck in his teeth out and basically they end up building these super complex interconnected relationships and a society and everything that all started there. And that's as much as I want to say about it because, like I said, if you like science for the ideas and like the out there-ness of it, this is a this is a great book to explore because I, I was reading this and just having such a good time with this. I gave this a four star. I really, really enjoyed this. Not because it's the most thought-provoking book ever or has the best prose or the, the characters are kind of non-existent. We're talking about dinosaurs and ants here. But the idea that is played with here is just fantastic. And it's, to me, it was executed so, so well. And uh, I just had a great time with this. And like I said, the idea that he proposes with this like symbiotic relationship between dinosaurs and, and ants is just like so far out there, but it's done just so well. It, and it's taken serious in a way that is enjoyable, uh, but like gives credence to this idea. It's not, it's not so far out there that it's like almost mocking it, even though it kind of is at the same time. I don't know. I really enjoyed this one. I thought it was really great. Uh, when I when I kind of saw what the premise was, I I had some reservations on reading it, but I'm so glad that I ended up reading it. Next up, I read my second five-star book of the year. Uh, it has been quite a while since I got one, uh, the first one being All the Pretty Horses by Cormac McCarthy, but I finally got another one, and it is from Stephen King, and that is Pet Cemetery. I absolutely adored this book. This book is haunting. It feels real. Uh, the the Every element about this book was just perfect for me. I, I absolutely love this book. And this is a Stephen King book that even though I knew like the, the spoilers and well, not, not all the, you know, I knew all the spoilers for this. It didn't matter. I still absolutely love this book. I know this book is, you know, a pretty big part of pop culture and that most people probably know like the general twists and what the story follows. And just the, the writing, just everything about this book just clicked so well for me. I read this super quick, binged, binged through this super, super fast and just loved every second of it. I mean, this is, I think uh, I'd have to go double check my rankings, but I think this is, I had this at my 11th favorite book of all time. So like it's way up there. You know, I don't give out those five stars easily. It's something, it really has to be special and really speak to me. And this, this book, I don't know if I could read this book if I had a kid. Like if you have kids, like there's, there's scenes in here that I just don't know. Like that exploration of grief and like sorrow and tragedy and just it's so powerful like I, I don't feel that way about a lot of books about there just being these super powerful elements to it that like you know that that grief is such a universal feeling like everybody experiences that to obviously to different extents different circumstances everything but the exploration that happens is just crazy uh it, it, it's it not many i don't find many books hard to read i have read plenty of books that have like horrific things happening and I legitimately like would not suggest like I would never tell my mom to read this book because obviously she has kids and stuff like I, I would I, I like I, I just can't imagine like being a parent and reading this uh, for a couple scenes in particular that are just I don't know scarring like legitimately scarring like ah, beautiful book absolutely loved it this is you know one of those books that I will never forget and I'm so glad that I kind of on a whim 
Reddit. I, I have to thank some of you guys because in the comments I was debating between this, uh, The Shining, and 11.22.63, and a lot of people told me to do this one now and save The Shining and 11.22.63 for later on, and uh, I just have to say thank you for pushing me to read this because it got me another five-star read and a book that is very special to me now and that uh, I will think about forever. The last fiction read I have of this month, because I did actually end up reading one uh, non-fiction book this month, is Letters from an Unknown Woman by Stefan Zigwig. Zig I'm not 100% sure how to say this. Uh, I saw Murphy Napier talking about this. I thought it sounded super interesting and this is another one that is super, super short. Did not take, I mean, I think the audiobook is, is it even an hour long or something? Yeah, like I said, super short. And this is basically the unhinged letter of a woman to a man who she has been obsessed with for basically her entire adolescence, uh, has done all kinds of just crazy things, she reshaped her life around being available for this man, and it is fantastic. And it's in f fantastic in like, uh, a kind of in another, like speaking of tragedy, like in a tragic, sad way, but it is also so riveting. It's like the car crash that you can't stop watching. You just have to keep going. And uh, yeah, it was great. So glad that I picked this one up on a whim and uh, because of Murphy's video and yeah, fantastic. Highly recommend. Don't wanna to say too much about it because you know it's super short and it would spoil a whole lot of things. But once again, highly recommend it. Super short, super f not fun, super just like that entertainment value of just like unbelievable of what this woman you know did is uh, just, uh, crazy. It's out there and I really enjoyed it. And then I mentioned I did actually get a fiction book in and that is Lessons in Stoicism, What Ancient Philosophers Teach Us uh, About How to Live and that's by John Sells. I don't rank my nonfiction reads. It feels kind of strange to give them a, a star ranking so I, I don't do that anymore. But uh, this is a book I saw uh, Jared Henderson talk about. Uh, I saw him and Jimmy Nuts doing a uh, Chatting with Nuts talk and uh, I didn't realize that he, was a he has a doctorate in philosophy and he's, you know, they were getting into some of that so he made a whole video about stoicism and, and, and everything and I just thought it was very interesting. I, I do have a sl very very small uh, schooling in religion and philosophy. I have a minor in uh, in that from college uh, but I have always found studying philosophy and religion to be pretty interesting. Uh, more religion than philosophy but I think part of that is I never got too far into that philosophy side. My minor was more focused on like religion and not just like one religion. I, I explored many different religions and all kinds of different things in school which I thought was pretty fascinating but uh, hearing him talk about uh, stoicism made me kind of want to dive into it a little bit and it kind of just unlocked a piece of me that I haven't really explored since I have been out of school, which was uh, was pretty cool. I really did enjoy this read. It makes me kind of want to dive deeper into some other philosophies and just kind of kind of see what some of those ancient thinkers, uh, you know, spent time and, you know, all these debates and everything and uh, just kind of see, uh, you know, some of the opinions on how they think life should be lived and just all kinds of things. I, I find it fascinating and there are definitely things that I read in this book that I think, you know, you can apply to your daily life. Uh, uh, Jared, Jared talks about specifically how Stoicism has kind of been co-opted by, uh, if you see like quotes about Stoicism, it's like AI generated like uh, uh, super ripped dudes with like throw away your emotions, that kind of stuff. And that's not really what Stoicism was about. He does a much better job talking about it. I'll link some of his videos uh, in the, the description. But I found it really interesting to like go and look at a much more nuanced and like in-depth discussion about it. And this is like just scratching like surface level stuff. Uh, so I'm debating on maybe I'll read meditations or something next, or, you know, maybe I'll explore something completely different, but I, I did enjoy my time with that. And now moving off the books to uh, manga, I really just read a bunch of Dragon Ball Z this month. And uh, for the longest time, I've been saying Berserk is my favorite uh, manga of all time. And I'm not ready to say that's not true anymore but man Dragon Ball Z and, and Dragon Ball just like you know the whole series it it's been so long since I've experienced it that going back and rereading it has just been fantastic I mean I forgot how, absolutely how in love I am with that series it is just so fantastic and it has completely taken over my in my manga reading I, I mean I'm technically I'm up to date on like Boruto my hero is coming to an end I'm caught up to that Black Clover uh couple other things I maybe read like one or two pieces of one piece or one or two chapters of one piece but in general it's just been Dragon Ball Z I think I read maybe like 40-ish 50-ish chapters this month and uh, yeah Dragon Ball is just one of those it's a special series I remember watching the anime as a kid and just being super into it I think 
Goku is the reason that I'm so into fitness at this point, uh, or, you know, I got so into fitness throughout my life and it's still a huge part of my life. And I legitimately do think that like Dragon Ball is a big part of that. Uh, but it, it's just so much fun. The action is so well done. The characters are so well done. There's just so much about it. And, and it still has that air of like silliness to it, but with that, with that tension still built in that I, I just, I don't know, I've just really enjoyed it and have been really glad that I've gotten back into the manga. Quick on the movie slash TV front, I wanna mention that yes, I am watching House of the Dragon. I have not watched the second episode yet. It is out, I've been meaning to watch it, but like I mentioned earlier in this video, work has just been crazy this week. Haven't really had much time to do much else. Uh, so I'll get around to it too. I will say with episode one, I was, it's good. But I was slightly disappointed with how the ending of episode one happened because when I read it in Blood and Fire, it's it's so much worse. And I knew they weren't gonna be able to like, I, I, honestly, I didn't expect them to be as graphic as the book was, but I did expect it to be turned up and that tension to be there. Uh, I had a problem with uh, the two characters, which I don't think they're named, so I'm gonna not say their name for spoiler reasons. I think maybe if you have the subtitles on, it says who's who, but I don't think their names are actually mentioned, but the guard and the rat catcher that uh, are, you know, those characters, uh, they seemed like bumbling idiots, and I guess that's just never the, the interpretation I got from them when I read uh, uh, Fire and Blood. And then obviously the scene that happens at the end, it is significantly worse. I mean, it's, it's so much worse in, in the book that, I mean, not that what happens in the show isn't horrific, but it felt like, I'm not saying they pulled their punches, but I just felt like that scene didn't get the justice it deserved uh, done to it, uh, which is a horrific thing to say because what happens in it is just like awful. I mean, like the worst thing you can imagine. But I feel like that could have been a moment in this show. Like there are moments that everybody talks about in uh, Ga a Game of Thrones. I feel like this could have been one of those like, oh my gosh, they did that. I can't believe that's a part of the show. So just my kind of quick rant there on uh, House of the Dragon and the other show that I have watched, um, and this is because I just needed to be able to turn off my brain and like not give 100%. I needed like my brain to be able to run at like 35%. Uh, and that is how I met your mother. I have watched, um, I think like almost five seasons of it. And that's because I can just put it on and like watch slash listen to it, but don't have to give it my full attention. So I've been able to just churn, churn through that. And uh, I do know like the major spoilers and how it ends, but I never watched a, a lot of the show. So, uh, so far I have been enjoying it. It's actually been way better than I thought it would be. I wasn't sure if I would actually like it. I, I've never really been like a huge sitcom person, but uh, I've been really enjoying it. And even knowing that the ending isn't like the most satisfying thing ever, it just kind of leads into my, uh, Endings are overrated theory and the show is pretty good. So I have been enjoying that as well. And on the video game front, uh, not much has changed. Still playing CS2 and uh, Genshin Impact. Those are really the, the two games I play at this point. Um, and uh, I just let that Steam library sit there and uh, not get played, which is sad because I spent money on it and I should play those games. But that is my month of June. It was a very interesting month. Some high, high reads. Uh, obviously, like I said, Pet Cemetery, new all-time favorite. It was fantastic. Uh, but that is all for me. I would love to know what you read, watched, all that fun stuff in the comments down below. And as always, have a good one.